So in regards to visual research and research in general, um, certainly in terms of concept design and, and working in, at WETA, the, the research phase of things is actually um, very important because so many of your ideas um, can come from the amount of um, sort of background research you, you, you're doing as you're working on the job. Um, and in fact, I think it's a it's very important to note that the more um, interests you have, um, the, and the more that you might have travelled, um, the 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 more you've sort of experienced in life, the more you can draw upon um, for inspiration um, and um, and for design and illustration ideas. So um, always a, a good excuse to to um, to perhaps do a bit of travelling in your life or at the very least have um, plenty of interests outside of just um, just art. Um, I mean, I think looking at some of the guys at work, uh, the ones that are really interested in creatures and robots, you know, they'll be um, avidly reading uh, and watching documentaries uh, and on, you know, on the science of robotics or, uh, you know, what, um, natural history documentaries on on animals and animal behaviour. So it's it's this level of interest that that will feed um, so many of your ideas. Um, and I think uh, one of the, the greatest sort of failings, I think, um, with some people's approach to, to design uh, is just not spending enough time thinking and exploring through um, ideas. So Quite often, um, in this particular case, Meredith um, uh, supplied a number of images, uh, particularly um, some costume images uh, and also um, some images around Chinese opera and, and just some general sort of images that she'd um, found regarding Sherlock Holmes. Um, I went away and spent um, quite a bit of time trolling the internet, um, doing a bit of a read-up on um, mainly Sherlock Holmes. Uh, I tried doing a little bit of um, reading on Chinese pulp fiction, but um, it wasn't a lot available that I could find easily. A lot of it, I suspect, is just hasn't been translated into English. Um, but I'd been given a fairly good verbal brief from Meredith about um, what Chinese pulp fiction was about, and more, more importantly, how it was going to pertain to this particular um, job. So once I'd re-familiarised myself with some of the, the sort of history, um, a little bit, I read a little bit up on communism um, as well uh, and pre-communism uh, in China. I kind of like the idea of, of setting, um, setting the story against the backdrop of, of um, a, sort of like a gigantic red communistic flag, sort of that idea of um, this kind of writing potentially coming to an end under um, the, the sort of more um, different regime uh, that was introduced with communism. So visual research, we often use mood boards at work. We collect hundreds of images sometimes um, and then we'll often sort of whittle them down and um, start um, creating mood boards out of them, you know, copy, maybe just digitally mood boards as well, you know, grabbing an A3 sheet digitally and, and pasting a whole bunch of images onto one sheet so that you can see all of your images in one go. Um, or if you're lucky enough to have a second monitor, you can pile the second monitor um, with images, with reference images. Um, I spent quite a bit of time also taking some images um, of both myself and my girlfriend stood in as a stunt double for the White Fox. Um, luckily, I was, we were both going to a fancy dress party. Uh, it was a Deadwood um, Wild West inspired uh, fancy dress party. And um, so it was a great chance to, I was wearing a suit and a, a bowler hat. So I, I got um, my girlfriend to take some photographs of me um, crouching over with a, a pen in my hand and a pencil in my mouth um, to, to get the angles right for those props that I was going to add later. Um, it's a really good reference, particularly for things like hands and um, clothing folds, um, drapery folds. Um, for the white fox, the 
bulk of the image from her hips down is coming from a, a photograph that Meredith quite specifically requested I used, um, which is great because in this particular case um, it's a fantastic photograph of this beautiful dress, which I am changing a little, but um, but I, I am sort of trying to stick to it as as um, as the client has requested. But I've got um, my girlfriend to pose holding a fan. Uh, which I bought in Spain many years ago. So it's you know if you ever get the chance to buy some props, it's always good to have um, some props lying around you can can use for inspiration. And, and uh, if you can always just find something. Uh, in this case, I didn't have a Chinese sword um, floating around, so I just grabbed a, a, a tube of um, rolled paper and and got um, my girlfriend to hold that, uh, and then took some photos um, of her mimicking. Uh, the pose that I was after, um, and um, and again I'm using, particularly using that reference mainly for the anatomy of the arm, um, and again the hands uh, is a big thing. Um, they're so complicated to get right. Um, so that's just a little bit about um, I suppose visual research. Um, th these days the internet just makes it so easy. Um, I still love looking through books, but. Um, but there's no doubt about it, the internet is, a, is an amazing resource for images, and and um, you know Wikipedia gets a fair bit of use, I must say as well, in terms of just background research. So, I think from here, what I would like to start um, perhaps discussing is is the the process, um, the the early part of the process. I mean, obviously this has been playing out. Um, playing out now, but I'm now going to jump back to the very beginning of the process and just talk a little bit about um, where I, I got the idea from in terms of um, sitting down with a client. So it's it's great if you can actually have a verbal discussion with your client. Um, often you'll receive a brief um, over the email um, and so you know there isn't you can ask a few questions but I must admit if you ever get a chance to verbally talk to a client about a job like this um, you'll find that so much more beneficial um, I took a little um, notepad along with me and I'll quite often just uh, doodle out literally doodle out stick figure style um, sketches um, to show the client on the spot um, to get some just to get some kind of feedback straight away um, I don't think you should ever be embarrassed by um, how uh, bad your doodling is. Um, they are just doodles. I mean, I'm not showing you my ones, um, and it doesn't really matter what you what you use, whether it's crayons, pencils, uh, doodling up and um, Photoshop. It, it really doesn't matter. The important thing is that you explore um, as many ideas as possible as quickly as possible, um, and you know, and just if you've got the luxury of um, of um, the de of a deadline that lets you um, think about things for a little while, that's great too. But failing that, um, just um, blocking down lots of um, little thumbnail sketches can really help save you a lot of time uh, in the long run. So that's pretty much what I did. I I, I, did, I must admit I didn't do a huge number of um, of thumbnails for this particular illustration, partly because it was being driven quite strongly by this one photographic image. So a lot of my problem solving uh, came around the how to introduce Sherlock Holmes into the picture, and more. And then the next sort of big hurdle for me um, was trying to work out how I was going to design these characters um, because. This is as much as, as this is an illustration. It's actually an exercise in character design. I'm using um, design to to throw uh, to, to add greater meaning and depth to my illustration um, and building in you know so that I can really play up that contrast between um, east meets west and, and playing off those kind of traditional associations. And so that's that was for me that was uh, you know start, and that part of that is thinking about it at the beginning and the other part of it is something that just evolves as you go along. So um, so yeah so I'll let this play out a little bit more and then I think uh, I'll talk a little bit about um, skin tones and color palette for for um, flesh tones.
um, earlier on I, I put down um, you know this bold green as a as an underpainting uh, uh, color for the for Sherlock Holmes's face um, a base paint uh, and I mean normally if I was painting a you know a Caucasian character um, that you know like Sherlock Holmes traditionally is um, shown to be um, I will certainly wouldn't normally in a realistic sense be um, putting down such a strong green um, base coat but um, because in this case I'm portraying Sherlock Holmes um, as a Chinese person um, I'm wanting to you know there's obviously um, difference in, in skin color between uh, a Caucasian person and an Asian person um, you know, so in this particular case I'm, I'm already starting to think about how to how to sell Sherlock Holmes as a as an Asian character, and one of the the ways I'm going to try to do that is to um, is through skin color. Um, it's going to have to be on Sherlock Holmes as well because um, the the um, character of the white fox um, is is going to be painted white or predominantly painted white. Um, so Holmes is really going to be my main chance to to sell. Um, even though they're both Asian characters, he's going to be the one I need to try to sell um, a more lovely, sort of more olive complexion. Um, so I've decided to go for this quite bold green. I'm not quite sure how well it's going to work. Um, it's, it's certainly I would, if I was painting this normally, I'd probably have opted for, um, you know, if it was a Caucasian face, I'd probably be starting with, you know, more. Um, umbers or burnt umbers and, and browns and building up from there um, and using more reds and whites um, and yellows to, to sort of build up the um, the face but uh, and but this time I thought I'd, yeah, I'd give it a try as I was saying before I was quite keen to introduce a, a strong complementary colour to the red uh, and I'm hoping that some of this green will, will come through and influence um, once I start using more of a sort of yellow ochre colour um, so it will influence the, the tone and luminosity of the skin to give it a, um, a more um, Asian complexion to the character. So basically in terms of painting the face um, I tend to, uh, it does vary a little bit but usually I tend to block in a, uh, a mid-tone um, colour first uh, and then I will go in and, and block in some of the darker shadow, shadow areas um, and then and then just slowly build it up from there I mean uh, I'm, sometimes I'll paint a face with no drawing whatsoever um, but uh, this time I decided to to um, get a bit of a drawing in there and this face is very much just from from out of my head I mean the the main reference model I'm using um, for the for the character at the moment is myself and I certainly um, don't look like a 50-year-old uh, um, Asian gentleman. So uh, I have been looking at a couple of um, uh, favourite um, Asian actors for a bit of inspiration, but um, uh, for the most part I really am just drawing out of my head, um, and I suppose some of that is just comes down to experience. Um, but uh, as you can see at the moment, the, the main thing I'm doing is, is trying to not apply the mid-tone um, ochre too too strongly. I'm trying to let that green base coat breathe through. Um, and, and now, as I said earlier, I'm starting to sort of block in some of those shadow areas again. Um, Holmes is obviously going to have quite a craggy um, face. Um, something I'll often do is... Um, put uh, because it's more of a glazing technique um, from oil painting is uh, I'll mimic that by painting uh, painting it over and uh, painting down a wash uh, in Photoshop and then just playing with the opacity uh, and then erasing back or um, painting back into it. Um, I suppose the because I'm trying to sort of conjure up the same painting style as, as say John Singer Sargent and some of these other um, you know more traditional painters um, uh, I'm trying to play with techniques that they would have employed um, in oils and trying to mimic that as closely as I can um, digitally 
uh, within the limitations of, of Photoshop, and there's plenty of limitations compared to, to real oils. Um, the one good thing, obviously, is you've got an undo button in Photoshop, which is something I use a great deal. Um, so, as you'll see this playing out, it's um, very much just a case of just building up um, the, 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 the layers of tone um, and always um, trying to emphasize the, the structure of the face um, and, and just, just keep trying to keep those tonal contrasts reasonably crisp um, so that you, you're getting good definition, particularly with this character because, as I said before, he's going to be quite craggy. Um, whereas White Fox, I suspect she's going to be quite smooth-skinned. Right, well, I'll just let this keep going. <laughs>